So you're gonna be a student at the University of Houston or you've been thinking about it. Let me tell you what they don't be telling you at them tours. Here's the confession of a UH student. So I'm gonna give y'all the pros and cons about everything, but some things only have cons. So first off is the rec. So some of the pros of the rec is that they have the intramural sports. There's always people playing basketball, volleyball, soccer in the other areas. If you're a gym rat like me, I don't really know what the proper name is. So I think it's called a squat rack. I'm not really sure, but you know what I'm talking about. They have that, so that's a really great thing if you're into working out. There's also an indoor and outdoor pool. So when it comes to the indoor pool, it either goes all the way down to 12 feet or 16 feet. I don't know, it's one of those, but I don't remember if regular students can go into that because the last time I was there was maybe sophomore year. All I know is that the water polo team be there and the rest of the pool is pretty chill. At the rec, there's also the outdoor pool. So it just opened up this last semester. I haven't been there myself, obviously, because it just opened but I've seen some pictures and it looks pretty good. And there's also a sauna there and I'd say it's pretty cool. It's not hot enough for me per se, or maybe I don't know how to use it, but if you like soft life or you trying to get into rich girl, rich boy vibes, definitely go to the sauna and get into that energy. There's also a hot tub and there's showers, of course, that's the best part, there's showers. And throughout the facility, there are lockers. And the upstairs part where the gym is at, all the lockers they have locks on them themselves so you don't have to bring a lock like a outside gym one of my favorite things about the rec is that it closes at 11 30 p.m on most days and that has definitely come in clutch but sometimes you need to get in that evening workout now here comes the cons what they don't tell you on the tour the rec is almost always full whenever i want to go to be honest and so if you're trying to go at 3 p.m or whatever time you get out of class just know other students have the same idea and you're not gonna be able to get on more than one machine and you're definitely not gonna touch a weight. So if you wanna get a workout in at the rec, I'd recommend either going super early in the morning or very late in the evening, starting around 10, depending how long you take to get through your reps. So one thing about the rec, yeah, there's equipment, but sometimes a lot of things are broken and not only would they be broken, they'll be broken for a long time. So that's something to take into consideration. Me personally, I really like the gym and I don't wanna be around a lot of people and I wanna be able to go to the gym whenever I want to. I go in the morning, but sometimes you can't always go on your schedule. And so I have a separate gym membership on the outside. And so if that's you, that's for you. So let's talk about UH parking. If you're watching this, I got beef with you. And just know, if you're gonna be a UH student and you have a car on campus, just know that UH parking is gonna be your op too. So one of the pros about UH parking is that if you purchase a parking pass on campus, you can park anywhere after 3 p.m. as long as you move your car back to your designated area by 7 a.m. And weekends, I think it's relaxed parking all day. Don't quote me on that, go check the website. And honestly, I don't think there's any more pros. Let's go into the cons. The biggest con is that one, they have citations, which I mean, that's not really necessarily the con. Let me get into it. Not only there's citations, but there's a citation strike system. So if you're someone who is forgetful or you don't got the money to spend, don't be trying to make mistakes when it comes to parking because there is not a lot of room for error when it comes to citations. It's three strikes. Even by the second strike, you're really pushing it. The third strike, you're gonna get a boot like me. And so one of the things that a lot of people don't like UH parking is that one, there's little mercy. A lot of times they also do make mistakes when it comes to different like parking things. And honestly, it's almost like you can never win. Your license plate is the permit. So it doesn't matter if you paid that $500 for your parking, you're still gonna get a citation if the license plate number is incorrect. And they didn't care. So at that time, I think I had like two citations. So on the third one, I got a boot. And to remove it, it's like, I think it's, how much is this deposit? It's about $200 and then you pay off whatever citations you had. So it's expensive. Honestly, I can go on and on and on about UH parking, but let's move on. So next thing, your next op when you come to University of Houston is financial aid. Half of the people don't know what they're doing, unfortunately. And so honestly, I don't know if there's really any pros when it comes to the financial aid here because UH is very stingy and they rather put their money towards sports. And so 
Something that I, not only I have experienced, but other students have experienced is your financial aid taking forever to get processed. If you have documents that have to get reviewed, you're gonna wait at least three to four weeks. That's another thing that makes it frustrating being a student at the University of Houston, having to wait an exponential amount of time to get your stuff approved. And did I mention that UH is stingy? In my opinion, I feel like our campus is very beautiful, but there's a lot of things that need work and I feel like money is put towards things that's not necessary necessary but anyway to each their own i guess so now let's talk about housing so the first housing that i moved to at uh was the quad townhouses so i was in townhouse four it was fun until it wasn't fun if you stay at those townhouses you're gonna have 17 other people living there with you everyone has their own room their own closet there's multiple bathrooms and showers so i never had an issue with someone being in the toilet room or the shower room let's talk about the pros so the pros is there's dishwashers so you don't have to worry about the dishes there's two sinks there's two microwaves and when you stay at the townhouses there's also cleaning service that comes every day and they do a daily wipe down of the kitchens so or even they clean the microwaves they clean the bathrooms the showers all of that and they also take out the trash for you so that's very convenient but they're not there on the weekends and they can only do so much they're not your maids right and so it does get hard when it comes to addressing the lack of cleanliness among others living at the townhouse because there are so many people and so i definitely have some horror stories when i got my friend brie on here we're gonna tell you all the stories about the townhouse but regardless it really wasn't that bad it's basically like the regular quads but it's in a townhouse speaking of uh housing i think i'm gonna just only specifically just talk about just uh dorms i'm not even gonna talk about the apartments and then private apartments i think i'm gonna save that for another video so i don't make this long let's talk about moody so moody is not only a dorm but it's also a dining hall when it comes to the dorm you couldn't pay me to live at moody i'm sorry communal showers bathrooms that's not for me and it's also the oldest housing as well i'd say the pro about moody is that it's the cheapest housing to live at at the university of houston live there at your own risk when it comes to the quads i didn't live at the regular quads but i had friends at the quads i was there all the time and i know some issues that people had was that sometimes there was a lack of hot water i think that was also an issue at cougar place as well there was a time where the elevator was broken for like really long time and the quad is big, so there's like multiple elevators, but one of the elevators was broken for a really long time. I don't remember all the other issues of student housing because I haven't lived in student housing in a long time until now. There was one point where things were so bad that like a student organization had to make posts about it. So I'll put some screenshots throughout the video so y'all can read that for yourself. Everything on the post is legit testimonies from actual students from University of Houston living in those housing. Another thing living at University of Houston is that every year the cost of everything goes up. Parking has gone up, housing has gone up. I'm not sure about meal plans because I never get a meal plan, but honestly for me personally, especially being a vegetarian, even if you're not a vegetarian, I don't see the value of having a meal plan. You're not gonna be eating that much worth of food grocery wise even within a year. So within a school year, you're paying about $4,000, $5,000 for maybe about five, six months, but I promise you, you're not eating that much food even within a year. All the housing, you have to have a meal plan, except I think Bayou Oaks, you for sure don't need it at the townhouse unless you want to. You don't need it at the loss as well. And everywhere else you have to pay for a meal plan. It's required. If you're an upperclassman, which is junior, senior, or you're at least 21 above, Honestly, your best bet is just living at the laws. Other places I personally couldn't live at because I don't like roommates. I don't, I've had enough. Let's talk about dining halls. And I know a lot of people who go to many different schools in Texas, such as Texas Southern University, Rice, Sam Houston, Texas State, UT Austin, UT Arlington, etc. And out of all like people that I know, so far, I think UH, obviously there's probably other schools, but UH is like the only schools that I personally know that has a 24 hour dining hall. And so there's Moody, that's a 24 hour dining hall, but there's also other dining halls such as, uh, I can't think of the other name, but I'm gonna put it over here. And size the other dining areas, we have new ones that had just opened on the other side of campus and they offer just more food options like tacos, burgers, etc. If you're looking to come to UH for a school spirit, UH is not the place for you. It's definitely not on the UT Austin type vibe or the Texas A&M vibe. 
But, you know, there is still a little school spirit, but it's not that much because our football team is not that great. But it's not terrible. It's not terrible. Regardless, we're still in the Big 12, so who cares? We still get them bragging rights. And so even though the football team is not all that, I really love tailgating. That's the best part of football season. That's what I look forward to. Everyone dresses up. We all wear bread. And we just have a good time and music and adult beverages if you're of age. And so another thing is on the right side, even though football is not that great, at least we have basketball. Our basketball team is cold. That's my favorite part about the school year is going for the basketball games. If you didn't know, or maybe you just didn't hear or you forgot, you get to get into sporting events as a student for free. All you have to do is have your ID and get a physical ticket at the office, or you can get it online. And so you want to, especially the basketball season, you got to get those fast. They open up every week on Monday. I don't remember what time, but if you go on the website during that season, it's going to let you know. So the next topic is definitely going to be a trigger warning. So if you're triggered about anything that has to do with mental health and other things within that category, any violence, recently our school has had quite a bit of suicide. And so since I've been a student at the University of Houston, three of them happen. And so, so one happened fall 23 and unfortunately it was one of my friends and then there was two that happened spring 23. That's something just to let y'all know have a heads up. Two of them happened at Agnes Arnold and that's just something that I feel like needs to be addressed because the school likes to hide it all the time but if you really look it's gonna be there. So I'd say the school has tried to have a better effort of helping students with their mental health. One of the other ones happened before I came to UH. It also happened at Agnes Arnold and it was in 2018. I just wanted to be transparent with y'all. Just know your resources. We do have CAPS. I wouldn't personally use CAPS, but since it is a free resource for school, I would never tell people not to go, but at your own risk. I've had friends who literally told me that they went at CAPS and it just felt like a waste of time. And then you also have to pay for it even though we pay so much in tuition, which doesn't make sense. And it's free at other schools. So that's a little weird, UH, y'all need to make therapy free, especially after all the suicides. So those are the confessions of a UH student. Let me know if y'all want a part two more nitty gritty. I also am working on a video after this about how to survive at the University of Houston, which goes more into depth of my personal experience and then also other things at UH that I'll be able to help you, whether that's learning about the GPA scale, academics, and different hacks. That's what I'm gonna be talking about. And anything y'all want me to cover, y'all just let me know down in the comments. And so thank you so much for watching and y'all have a wonderful day.